So we're here today with Tom Green, owner of Custom Rod and Reel in Lighthouse Point. Tom is the acknowledged snook guru for uh, South Florida. Snook season opened the other day, February 1st, here on the Atlantic Coast. Tom, if I wanted to catch a snook today, what do I need to do? Well, see if you've got a variety of things you can do. We've had a tremendous shrimp run the last week or two. So there's snook coming through the inlet, feeding on the shrimp as well okay. as tarpon. Early morning, late afternoon is the best time. Normally, the best time is the start of the outgoing tide. Okay. Normally. That's when we're going from the start of the high tide going Full high out to low. Going out to low. Okay. And normally, I like to do that type of stuff after 10 or 11, 12 o'clock at night. That's after the boat traffic slowed down. Okay. After the noise is slowed down after everything is calmed down. Um, varieties, let's say. There's a lot of baits on the market. Okay, okay? this is a Storm, uh, Wild Eye, Swim sh Shad. Five inch size, five inch mullet. half, three quarter ounce okay. type bait, okay? We're so taking a, a piece. weighted bait. It's a weighted bait, With a, all right? And that gives it its swimming that's action. swimming action. I tie a, a Tom Green upside down knot here. We'll show that later. Come back through, pull it down, and slide down. Now you've got a piece of 40, 50, 60 pound leader material. We can either tie this to a swivel or we'll tie a knot and splice it to a bimini so the line goes through your guides very easily. main line. Or for the main line, okay? What would you recommend for that main line? Well, I'm using Kevlar with a bait cast or a spinning rod anywhere from 12, 15, right on up to 40 or 50 pound line. Bra on, braided line. Braided line okay. works better. The reason being is I can take this in the inlet, I can throw it out or off the bridge, a snook, in general, is on the bottom. Right. You ever see them? They're down there. They come up to feed, yes. So this is one type of lure. Okay. We can take a red and white. We can take a, a clear, all okay. right? These particular ones that work. Another jig that's been around forever is what's called a red tail hawk. We don't know why it's called a red tail hawk, but the manufacturer have always just put a couple of pieces of red in it. Mm -hmm. Red and white. Red and white colors, normally yeah. is a classic color. The other thing that's come on big the last five, ten years is anything made with mylar. Okay. A jig with mylar represents just the shininess of the bait. Still can have the red in it. Still can have the red yeah, eyes. But the mylar gives the it mylar that flash. The mylar gives it that flash. Right. Prime example is, there's your mylar. Right, built That's in. That's the same yeah. built in. Okay. There's another lure we used for years called Mr. Wiffle jig, <laughs> which actually had holes in the tails. Yeah, the old Mr. Wiffle. The old Mr. Wiffle. And that swims as good as anything ever made. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's still a great lure. Okay? You can turn around. There's so many lures on the market. These happen to be your Zuri's. There's mirror lures. There's a variety of lures. Okay, the other thing is a lot of times that happens is you got a, a large school of bait on the surface. The bait comes up. The birds dive on them. Okay? The birds are eating them from the top. The fish are eating them from underneath. But if I can fish under the school of bait, I've got a better chance of catching the fish. Sure. The fish on the top is not the ones you, you see them blow them up and, and eat them, but let's fish underneath them. That's where the fish are feeding. Right. Yeah, the, your bait's like the weak link. My bait is the weak link, fish, exactly. Yeah. All right? Now, let's talk about shrimp. This time okay. of year, we've got a lot of shrimp coming through. And you remember last week, everybody was going to the inlet, and they're dipping shrimp. Right. And one guy says, you know, I can only eat so many shrimp. I get a five-gallon bucket, and I see the fish blowing up everywhere. What do I do? I said, very simple. Take the same piece of 40, 50 pound leader material, take a 1020 type hook, and I smell it because it's easy to do. Stick the line through the, the back end of the hook, through the eye. Okay. I'm going to pull it to the left. I'm going to turn it like that. So you're making a loop. I'm making a loop. And all I'm going to do is start from the back of the hook and wrap up. So I'm going to wrap up like six or eight times. I'm going to hold it with my fingers here. So it doesn't slip, I'm going to pull the tail, and I just lassoed my hook on with my fishing line. So you didn't actually tie a knot. Yeah, it's, it's actually almost like a uni like knot, but it's looped yeah. into there. Okay, now I've got another way okay. of showing this that people understand very easily, all right? Let's take a piece of eighth inch nylon rope for visual. There's a, a hook for blue marlin. Okay. But we're going to do the same thing, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to make a circle. Okay. Do you go through the, the eye? Or? No, don't even go through the okay. eye. So the circle goes around the body here. Okay. From the back end of the hook, which is a, the tail end of the hook, I'm going to take this, throw it across, 
and I'm going to wrap up toward my finger. Back towards your hand. I'm going to okay. wrap up six or eight times. And this is something that you can see very simple. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to reach down and pull the tail. That pulls the loop out. Okay. That pulls that. And I have just snelled a hook. Wow. Now, a lot of people say, why do you snell a hook? Well, in this particular situation, we have a hook that has a turned up eye, turned down eye, whatever you want to call it. Get this in here so I can cut it off. If I take that hook and that monofilament comes through, I'm pulling on a straight point to drive that barb or drive that hook. Into the if I'm coming out. straight off of it as I am doing here, I'm pulling the hook this way. Mm -hmm. I want to really drive that barb that way to drive that point of that hook in, and then it will pull it in. So the turn down eye hook, okay? changes that angle and drives the point of that hook be ouch, better. <laughs> Take my word for it. Now, will you put a live shrimp on that? Yeah, exactly. And where I'm normally going to hook the shrimp is the, just above the eyes is a horn here. If you hold the shrimp up to the light mm -hmm. and look through it, you see the little black spot. Right. That's the body or the meat or the heart of the, of the shrimp. Hook it right in front of that little shell, which right. is a clear so air pocket. Kill them. You don't kill yeah. them. Or you can turn around the like the back two joints and hook it inside there mm -hmm. and then you can cast it like we would do for bonefish that right. you want to throw a long distance. Um, rule of thumb, I double or triple my leader material for the diameter of the fishing line I'm fishing. So 20 pound I'm probably go up to 50 or 60 pound. Right. Hook size, we match our hook as well as our leader to the bait. Right. So if I'm fishing live shrimp, I'm going to be using a 102030 type hook. If I'm using the storm jig or this type of jig and I'm in the current, the current's ripping 10, 12 knots and I'm throwing sideways, I'm going to use a, a one and a half, two and a half ounce jig. If I'm throwing it off a bridge, the current's coming at me, I'm throwing up current, I'm going to use a half ounce jig because it's going to go down fast. Right. But if I'm broadside to the current, I'm using a heavier jig. Right. So, so it, 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 it's all based course, on, yeah. the, on presentation. Presentation right. is the whole secret. Okay. Right, you got to put it where, like we said, where the fish are. Now, exactly. with, with your shrimp, are you putting a sinker on That's there? That's a very good question. Now, what you can do is if you, you want your, your bait, your, your shrimp to be natural, you can take and run a split shot, like up here this far, mm -hmm. or you can run it right close to the, to the hook. Okay, okay so, right. so you, you can work it both ways, find out which is working better for you at the time. Another way that we do, let's say we go to Pompano Pier, Fort Lauderdale Pier, or any of the piers, Certain times of the year when these shrimp are pouring down the beach on the sand, these shrimp are on the bottom very thick. We only see the ones on the surface. So I can, instead of tying a hook here, I tie a small troll right, which is a piece of lead with a hook in it. I'll hook the shrimp the same way, throw it up current, and I bounce that shrimp in the sand on the bottom. Where the other shrimp Where the are. other shrimp are at. So when that snook's swimming along the bottom, he sees a shrimp jumping that's running away from him, He's going to go over and, and nail it. There might be 15 other shrimp around it, but that one that keeps coming up, he's going to eat that one. Think about what you're doing, your presentation, your bait, the whole bit, and you'll have no problem. Tight lines are good fishing. Okay, great stuff. For more videos like this, go to sunsentinel.com.